Hi people, today we are going to be talking about The Honest Truth by Dan Gemeinhardt and I have to say that I love Dan's books. Um, I'm dealing with a very big loss and this is the third book of his that I have read and I have to say that they managed to touch some very deep and important part of my soul and I find these books healing and they make me cry, they make me have ghost bumps, but they heal me. It's like the good kind of crying. They are very heartbreaking books. Sometimes they are very sad because they are dealing with uh, real things that happen in life. And they told you because you know that this is real or you have experienced something similar or you know what it feels like to feel lost or to lose someone you love or you know and I think that his books uh, really speak to you so this one here it says this book in three words and you can see it's exciting inspiring and heartbreaking uh, it's a very sad book but also in some way it's also filled with wonder and with a sense of overpowering ourselves and overcoming ourselves and this is amazing. I don't know if overpowering ourselves is what I meant to say. I meant uh, being able to face our own fears and you know to become a better person. This book it's very sad because it uh, talks about Mark who is a little boy and he has cancer. So at the beginning of the book we have him kind of running away with his dog Bill I don't know how to pronounce that. And because he wants to climb this mountain, it's special for him. We will learn why during the book. I'm not going to make any spoilers. So it's very sad to have this young kid dealing with this illness. And in the book, he's going to be talking about how it makes him feel to know that he has cancer, how he deals with the fact that every time that he, fa he thinks that he has beaten it, that he is into remission, it comes back for him and the anger he feels because he feels like his time is running out and there's lots of things he has to do and he feels sadness and he feels pain and he feels anger and I love how real all the emotions and how raw all the emotions in this book are because you feel for that kid and you can understand what he's going through and I love he has his little dog uh, to keep him company, to make him know that he's not alone. And I think that this book is very inspiring because it, uh, I don't know even how to say that because this book it really touched, touched me in a way that I can even put into words in the review. I just have to say that I have read it in one sitting. I just couldn't put it down because it's so deeply amazing. I mean, I love how inspiring it is to have this kid who can rely on the people he loves. And I love how this is a story about a, a kid and his dog. How he talks during the book about how amazing dogs are. I'm a dog lover, I love them and I have to agree with many, all of the statements of this book about a dog loving his boy never worrying from his side and even risking his own life to protect his owner and I think that is amazing and that feeling that it doesn't matter how alone you are and how sick you are or where you are or who you are in life if you have a dog's love you have everything that matters in this world and I love that we have this very strong friendship and I also love that we have uh, the friendship that he has with Jess who is her, his best friend. They have been together since kindergarten. And I love how they can count in, with each, on, on each other. And I love how they love each other. And it has nothing to do with her being a girl and him being a boy. They love each other because they are friends. They are best friends. And they come their blessings and they cry together and they do everything together. And I love this friendship that they can kind of feel each other. It doesn't matter how far they are. And it's amazing. And I love that we have kind of both sides of the story. We have um, chapters that begin like chapter four, and it's going to be um, from Mark's point of view. And then we have four and a half, and it's going to be inclusive, and it's going to be from Jess's point of view. And this also allows us to have like a bigger 
um, viewpoint of the story because we know the viewpoint of Mark who is risking his life thinking I might die here but who cares I'm going to die anyway I hate that he's in that position honestly but also we are going to have um, Jess point of view that's going to offer us glimpses about what's going on at Mark's home how his parents are dealing with everything and how she feels about keeping a very big secret and not knowing if she should tell or not because it might mean help Mark but also not helping him and helping him yeah I know it sounds confusing you have to read the book to understand that and I love how this book talks about so many things about uh, how life sometimes is very messed up and people who deserve to have long lives don't get them and how sometimes uh, there's this horrible illness that comes and sometimes you can run and sometimes you can't and it's a very heartbreaking story truly uh, but I love that it also touches in the types of friendship, uh, the family you choose, the family you have and yeah as I say the little dog that won't ever leave you alone and that's amazing. This is a book that's going to make you it's going to touch you deeply. It's going to be a very sad book, but also full of wonder when this kid kind of, uh, you know, uh, plants this idea on his head that he wants to do this thing by himself. He wants to get to be able to choose what he wants to do with his life. He is tired of going to hospitals to get treatments, uh, to see people crying and have to keep everything inside. Uh, he doesn't want to cry because he doesn't want to worry her parents, his parents or hurt them. So it's like, you know, all of this is inside him and he wants just for once to choose his own path. And there's these moments in which he finds uh, happiness and he finds people who is willing to help him. And I love the journey he does, but physical, uh, going to that mountain he wants to climb and also inside himself coming to grasp with everything that's going on and how hard everything is. And I love how the author is honest, like, <laughs> It, it, it's, he explains the honest truth of everything and I was cheering for this guy, uh, for this boy, I wanted him to succeed, I wanted him to get to the top of the mountain, I wanted him to be with his dog and with his friends and with his family and be okay and I wanted him to, to get to choose everything he wanted from his own life and I was crying and I was uh, being very touched and the parts about dogs and uh, illnesses and everything yeah, it's, it seems like this is a small book, but it contains a wall inside it. And I have to say that it has moved into my real keepers part of the library because this story is amazing. And if you want to know more about um, the characters of this book, there is another book by Dan Game Heart that's called A Good Boy or A Good Dog. And it kind of has some references to this one, so in case you want to pick the other one up. or any of his books because he's an amazing writer and I love that he writes these kinds of books. His books are thought or labeled as middle grade but I think that everyone can read them. Uh, this one uh, for me has been like the best book of his that I have read. I say that with every book of his that I do read but yeah he's an amazing writer and I love who hair felt and full of soul his books are so yeah pick them up you're going to cry you're going to celebrate life you're going to hug your dog and you are going to get better if you're dealing with loss or with hurt i don't know how these books do it but they help me and i hope that if you read them you love them and they also help you to get better and to help you through your journey so yeah pick them up because they are amazing um, yeah, very soulful books that will stay with you. So yeah, thank you for watching. Bye.